Hi everyone, William Garcia, Partner Solutions Architect at Amazon Web Services. Today we are back to talk about Service Mesh in Red Hat OpenShift service on AWS or Rosa. I'm also with Michael from Red Hat. Hey Michael. Hey Will, I'm a managed OpenShift black belt that works on Red Hat's managed cloud services team and it's a pleasure to be here. Good to have you. So today we wanted to uh, talk about some of the key benefits of Rosa. Adoption typically comes from its flexibility in compute choices, uh, resiliency and security at the platform level. And I'd like also to start understanding what we can do to improve the management of our applications. Yeah, so Rosa is being chose by organizations because it's a fully managed enterprise ready application platform. So deploying microservices onto Rosa is a great first step. And the second step could be to employ a Istio service mesh. And a service mesh gives you great visibility over how network and service to service communication is happening. Okay. So perhaps before we talk about use cases, I think it would be good to cover the core concepts of a service mesh. Yeah, so OpenShift service mesh is deployed into your cluster via the operator hub. So it's very easy to get started. It's based on Istio, the upstream project, and it's broken up into two major components. Okay. The first being the control plane. So let's talk a little bit about what that control plane is made out of. Right? So the control plane is made out of Istio D, which has four subcomponents. Those four subcomponents are Galley, Citadel, Pilot, and Mixer. Mm -hmm. Those four subcomponents give us some very key components that we would need inside of a service mesh. The first one being the ability to manage certificates. Right? So we, have a, we can have a secure control plane because the certificate management is being uh, provided to us from Istio. We also have the ability to define network policies. So those policies allow us to secure traffic between certain services or delimit traffic between others. And another key component of that control plane is that fine-grained observability and telemetry data. We can take a look at how the flow of traffic is operating between services, and we can see when there are failures or when there are outages. Makes sense. So now this is the control plane, the brain of the service mesh. How do we meshify an application? Sure, so the second major component of that service mesh is going to be the data plane. So the data plane is made up of Envoy proxies. So I'm gonna draw some Envoy proxies on the screen here. And you can see that these Envoy proxies are going to be deployed automatically by the service mesh. They're gonna be sitting next to application containers, which we'll get to in a second. There's also one other part of the data plane. The data plane will also include your ingress and egress gateways. The ingress and egress gateways are the entry point and exit points of that service mesh. So any traffic flowing in and out of your service mesh, whether that's the public internet or to another service in public cloud, would flow through that ingress service mesh. Okay. So the interest of having this Envoy technology, proxy technology on top of your applications is that it's going to help you decouple routing type of logic so you don't have to bring that into libraries within your code and so that you know helps you to scale that across different type of applications using different languages for example exactly so let's take a look at how that might look like if we have two deployments inside of a rosa cluster you can see here if you were to name this deployment foo an application engineer would deploy their container in this configuration and you might have a second application running alongside it here let's call this one bar with this application container. And you can see here that the application engineer is focused on deploying those containers into this configuration. And what we're gonna actually see is that in a service mesh, these two will be connected to the Envoy proxy and service to service communication will occur through the Envoy proxy itself. Okay. Another fantastic part or configuration in a service mesh is that these Envoy proxies are automatically deployed for you and they're going to be controlled by that control plane. So the control plane is delivering the certificates to the Envoy proxies. They're delivering the policies to the Envoy proxies to determine if a service can speak to another. And it's also capturing all that telemetry data. Right. We also have the, the ingress and the egress gateway. So if we've got users that sit outside of the cluster, maybe in the public internet, they're going to be hitting the ingress and egress gateways which are gonna allow you to flow traffic into, let's say the Foo application container via that Envoy proxy. I see. So perhaps let's start covering some of the common use cases. Uh, for service-to-service -service communication, typically you would want to bring 
for example, encryption or allow disallow c communication between services? Yeah, so number one option for why people choose to use a service mesh is the security. So in this case, our control plane can actually deliver certificates to the Envoy proxies and encrypt traffic between those two Envoy proxies themselves. This is going to be provisioned via mutual TLS. And you've got the ability now to decouple that logic of having encrypted traffic between two application containers. So an application engineer isn't worried about ensuring that their service is communicating over a, an encrypted uh, pathway. They'll just rely on the mm. Envoy proxies doing that for them. Fantastic. Encryption in two ways as well. Yeah. Another component is going to be traffic shaping. So traffic shaping gives you the ability to separate traffic between services based on some sort of certain rules. So for example, maybe I want to deploy a second version of the Foo, uh, the Foo project or the Foo application. If I wanted to split off my traffic, maybe I only want to send a small amount of it to the second version. Right. So this is now talking about patterns like uh, canary releases or A-B testing, for example. Exactly. So here, maybe we would want to send only 10% of traffic to V2 on our, uh, on our first deployment of it, because we want to verify that that traffic flowing from the public internet is hitting V2 and it's and is doing as we, uh, as we expect it to perform in production. Excellent. And another example might be how we control the routing behavior within our cluster. There are really two major ones that we'll talk about today, which is path-based routing and mm -hmm. header-based routing. So path-based routing, for example, would be you defining a route for your applications, foo or bar, and then enabling you essentially to expose endpoints or sub-endpoints behind the domain name, for example, giving you a choice to you know, also control versioning through URLs uh, if you want to. Uh, similarly, you can do that with headers, uh, you can, you know, control where the traffic goes based on the presence of a particular header key value, uh, for example. So that could be uh, user group uh, one goes to uh, version one of your application, as an example. Yeah, so this is great. So this is, these are three major use cases for why a customer might choose to use the, a service mesh in mm -hmm. their microservices architecture. Rosa also comes bundled with a set of services that complement this. Right, so Rosa provides uh, a full-on stack of monitoring, logging, and observability tools that are built into the built into the Rosa cluster. Yeah, so typically, this native monitoring stack comes in with a Prometheus for uh, metrics that you can capture out of core services, but also your end-user applications, as well as uh, logging services and dashboarding services like Grafana and uh, Elasticsearch to keep your logs inside or send them outside of your cluster as well with collectors, for example. Now, uh, what's particular to uh, Service Mesh here is that you have visualization tools that are specialized for understanding some of these rules we just described before. Exactly. So Red Hat OpenShift Service Mesh bundles in two other components as part of that deployment via the operator mm -hmm. hub. So those two components, one of them is Kiali. Kiali is a visualization layer for your service mesh. It gives you the opportunity to log into a UI and see how service-to-service -service communication is occurring. You can also break down and understand the paths of service-to-service -service communication, determine if they're encrypted, if there are any errors, or what sort of rate of traffic is flowing through those paths. Yeah, pretty useful. And another component that OpenShift Service Mesh bundles is Jaeger, which is a distributed tracing project. Jaeger gives you the capabilities to track a network packet from a user flowing into your service mesh and across all of your containers in your microservices architecture. So this is great if you wanted to do application performance monitoring and determine where there might be some uh, very slow service-to-service -service communication occurring. Yeah, like for example, latency issues uh, are easy to see through this app instrumentation based on open telemetry as well as a standout. So that's really going to take you a bit further in understanding that. Exactly. Fantastic. I think to conclude, you know, OpenShift Service Mesh is available as an operator-based installation in Rosa. So we will share a few links with you to get started with it uh, really quickly. I want to thank you, Michael, for this uh, session. Be sure to stay tuned for other videos like this in the future. Thanks again. Yeah, thank you.